There's Lori Trout. There's Kelly Murphy. Oh, man. There's Mark Kenny. Hey, Mark. Bill Wollum is now here. Yeah, Trails and Bourbon. Ooh, Club Soda and Orange Bitters. Wow. Nice cocktail. Oh, he's doubling up. He's doubling up. Yanks and Red Sox. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All at the same time. Well, yeah, you must be one of those people that can multitask. Yeah, I'm not really a multitasker. And you know why I'm not a multitask tasker? Because it's Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. The day that time forgot. And I'm an old geezer. A geezer amongst geezers. Welcome. Welcome to the Geezer Nightclub. Yes, friends. No, no, no. People of all ages are welcome here in the treehouse. Yes, yes, indeed. Who else is here? Bridget Lacey's here. Hey, hey, Bridget. Hey, Katrina. There's Pauline Jones. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. One of the things that I've been for the last week, or for parts of the last week, Steve Deleen. Hey, Steve. Cool. Cool. I'm one of my Nebraska brothers is here in the house. Me and Tim Schwandler and Steve Deleen are Nebraska brothers. We are brothers of the uh, of the Nebraska dirt, of the Dernal dirt. Yes, indeed. Welcome aboard, sir. Uh, what was I saying? Was I saying something important? Probably not. Oh, one of the things that I have been during this, uh, this uh, trying time of uh, just a lot of un unprecedented levels of pain, mostly in the late evening and when I get out of bed. It's just like, oh man, it takes like three or four hours before I can even sit down. One of the things I've been is pissed off. It's, you know, I've, you know, most of the time I'm the same kind of yippy skippy guy that I always am. You know, I'm Mr. Yippy Skippy. Brad Stenbubba! Brad Stenbubba in the house! Joseph Webb, Joe and Cat in the house! Yeah, that's all right. It's okay to show up late. No worries. No worries. I hope you brought a note. That's all you need. You just need a note from a doctor or your mom or something. Anyway. Welcome, you guys. So, but I'm mo mostly I feel, I still feel like the luckiest guy I know. Uh, because, well, because I'm married to who I'm married to. That's the first reason. Uh, and the next thing on the list, I would say, is this encounter here, right here. This very thing that we're doing right now. So, but I thought, you know, I could play my angry song, couldn't I? Yeah, just to kind of kick things off. Everybody knows the story of this, right? It's the old, uh, what was it, Last Exit on Brooklyn. I used to do an open mic there. I think it was Monday nights. You sign up between six and seven or something like that seven o'clock they draw out six names and those six people get to play between nine and midnight or something like that you get three songs yeah i've been going in for a few weeks not getting picked finally got picked got the last set of the night last set of the night the guy that went before me ran long of course and i was up going up to the owner and saying hey man am i going to get to be able to am i going to get to be able to play here tonight? i mean come on he's oh yeah yeah no problem as long as you start before midnight you can do your three songs i don't care so I'm like, okay. So the guy, the guy that's up there does his third song, and then I see him call the owner over and says something to the owner, and the owner's kind of like, like that. And the guy goes back to the mic, and he says, well, rather than bring up another performer, I'm just going to do one more song, and then we're going to call it a night. Now, I had been, this was like 11.50 p.m., and I had been there since, since about 6 o'clock that evening drinking coffee and out back smoking cigarettes and getting ready to making sure my guitar was in tune and stuff like that. So, this was my song that I wrote in response. It's called King of the Art.
the house you grew up in was nobody's home Be someone else if you please And you buy an identity Hairdos and outfits are all that they see And you're suddenly better than me Such an intricate scene You bumped me off of the list You bumped me out of a dream I thought I saw some sincerity But you were showing me charity The cheesecloth reality Was showing a scene You're suddenly better than me that good at writing angry songs but that one that one that one had some had some real life experience behind it you know it's like I was pissed I was pissed you know because you know I would have blew that guy off the stage I would have yeah it's just you know but I but you don't want to be like that you don't want to be like oh I would have that guy he couldn't stand a chance why he didn't want to let me up there because he knew I'd blow him off the stage Gammon Pete Ah, it's good Joe. Good Joe. Good Joe starts with a good cup. That's all I got to say about that. That's right, friends. Yes. Around and around we go. Thanks, Ma. Mm. Cindy Snyder. Holly Tuttle. Cool. Cool. Chrissy Chessmore. Man, oh man. Timmy I got some treatment today. I got... Uh, acupuncture and this other thing some kind of ancient chinese medicine um warm oil and this 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 kind of a piece of bone that's really smooth and get, they rub it on you with this warm oil all the way down your spine on both sides and you know it's kind of it's supposed to bring blood to the to the area and kind of work out some in, adhesions and stuff like that so Billy's kind of buzzed right now from that, I think. That was just this afternoon. Hayden Reese is in the house. Hey, Hayden. Welcome, sir. Oh, man. Blistering. Ooh. Wow. Blistering. Gee. Methowians. Rick Lewis and the Ilk. If they happen to show up, tell them I mentioned their name. Down there in Portland, Oregon, we got Mr. Gary Shieldstad. Yes, sir. Mmm. Ah. Over there in Alabama, they're staying up late. Some of the late night crew. Joe and Cat. I hope Cat's with you. Hope Cat is improving, improving, improving. Yes, indeed. Now, Lori Trout. It's the uh, Lori Trout Honorarium. It's the, it's the smallest of the mugs, but, 
But trust me, it packs a punch. It does pack a punch. Okay, here we go. Whoa. That's smooth. Yes, friends. Mm. Janine Boggs. Designated chaser. Thank you, thank you. Ah, I need that chaser to continue. Val Sanford's down there in Portland also. Sent me the treehouse mug. It's a freestyle mug. Freestyle. It means it doesn't have a handle. It's freestyle. You don't find too many of those, you know what I'm saying? One can consider almost a goblet, but no. Cindy Snyder! Cindy Snyder with our motto here in the treehouse, please. As always, we hope that you will. I'm going to try not to apologize and complain as much tonight, but you know, you know how I am with that. You know. Out there, the Lame Cat Ranch, we got Holly Tuttle, Kim Nelson out there on where you got to take one of these to get to, uh, you know, that's the situation out there. But that's cool. It's cool, man. It makes it a cooler place. And then our latest addition. These guys have been getting along great, I got to tell you. It's a very harmonious grouping. I don't know what's going on. There. No rabble rousers. I thought that Lori Trout mug would, you know, be a troublemaker because, you know, that Lori Trout, she's kind of a troublemaker. But no, but no. Harmonious uh, relations amongst the mugs. And I got to say, I'm happy about that because they're right down here. If they're arguing and stuff, then it's going to be, you know, going to disrupt the show. You don't want the people down front to be arguing about that stuff. It's not good. We do, however, still have bats flying around here, kind of willy-nilly, the invisible kind of... Wait a minute! It's the hand, ladies and gentlemen. The, the, the hand is... The hand is... The, the, the hand is... The hand has been, you know, kind of... Ooh, never mind. Forget everything I said. Anything that might have been considered to be negative. Don't. Really, I, I was just... Just a momentary thing. Ah... Uh. Steve Deline, I'm glad you're here, man. Uh, Tim and Sherry Ber Vernon, uh, Tim and Sherry Vernon. It says the Thumb People. I'm not sure I get the reference. I don't know. The Thumb People. Alice is here. Alice Davy. Now uh, she said she might stop by for a few minutes. She's very busy, you know, because she's in graduate school. Annie and Robert, Janine Boggs, family. Tim and Demetra are in the house. Scott and Rhonda. Man, I missed those guys. Darn it. How did I miss you guys? You must have gone by while I was playing something or something. I'm glad you guys are here. I know I owe you a call, Scott. I just was been waiting until I feel better. Yeah, I could call you right now. It might be kind of an interruption on the show because I feel great right now. Who else we got? We got Bill Willem. We got Bridget Lacey. Brad Stenbubba. Cindy Snyder is in the house. Holly Tuttle and Kim Nelson. Oh, my goodness. Rochelle Hamill, Mark Kenny, Lori Trout, Chrissy Chessmore, Kelly Murphy. That means Mary's there too, right? I hope so. Katrina Knight, Kathy uh, Brewer and Loris O'Toole, uh, Katie and Joe. Oh, my gosh. My gosh. Now, Tim and Sherry Vernon, they're down there in Florida, so they're up late too. They're up late too, but it's only an hour. Only an hour, you know. One night a week, you can stay up till what, 11 o'clock? What is it, 11? Yeah. 11 o'clock. Come on. Of course, Tim's probably already asleep. And Sherry, I appreciate the fact that you take Tim's computer and or his phone and, and do the typing as if Tim is still awake. You know, it's good to keep up those kind of appearances. You know, you want to you wanna do that. Sorry. Just kidding. Tim's probably still awake. He'll be awake till, you know, half halfway through the show. He'll probably nod off sometime during the poetry break. A lot of people do that. Perfectly all right with me. Yeah. I may do it myself at some point. It's like that. You know, this, uh, this getting older thing. Whew.
Scrape me off of this electric ceiling Push me out into the frozen wood Feel out of place and it's the fool's revealing Back in the house I got video violence Back in the house I got petroleum food Out here that fool hears an unnatural silence I think we're all beginning to understand How a dollar is the devil's fist Clenched tight on a human hand What good are all these colors and borders? What did that wall mean anyway? The business suits are up there handing out orders. I see the faces of the children in Asia on the news or some other show. Remember how all that stuff used to phase you? I think we're all beginning to understand How a dollar is the devil's fist clenched tight on a human hand I know a lot about emotional baggage I'm well acquainted with the one who waits I ask myself, is there a soul left to salvage? But there's a little bed in a little room A little heart and a little home A speck of light inside of King Tut's tomb I think we're all beginning to understand How a dollar is the devil's fist clenched tight on a human hand I think we're all beginning to understand How a dollar is the devil's fist clenched tight on a human hand I've prided myself for, you know, 40 or 50 years on the fact that I've got this pretty good metronome in my head. I'm noticing my metronome is starting to, my metronome is starting to get a little squishy in spots. It's just a little bit squishy. Oh, well. I guess there's hope for improvement as long as I noticed that there's an issue. You know, when I, when I stop noticing that there's an issue, then it's probably, it's a part of it that I got set up the moment I did it. It'll be more like that, you know. you know. Yeah, yeah. But in the meantime, here we are. Here we are, Treehouse Concert number 62. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Gosh, I can't, it's just, it's, it's just, it's an endless wonderment. Endless wonderment. Thank you, Cindy Snyder. Yes, indeed. Uh, it's an endless wonderment to me that you guys want to be come back week after week and, you know, Come on, you've heard the songs. You know, we've been doing this since April of 2020. I mean, you've probably heard all the songs more than once, more than twice, more than three times. You know, because there's only about, I think there's about 75 or 80 that I'm kind of cycling through on the big master list. But boy, oh boy. I sometimes feel like I'm having more fun singing them now than I've ever had before. Maybe it's strictly the fact that I appreciate the fact that I can still sing them, some of them. 
Some of them are a bit of a stretch. Some of them push that little uh, metronome a little close. The cheese is starting to slide off the cracker ever so slightly, as we were talking about last week. But anyway, but anyway. Oh, drink it before it's cold, Bill. Drink it before it's cold. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, you have to understand, I would love to be playing at the CNP Coffee Company. I just don't have the... They're not doing indoor shows yet. Nor is the Cooth Buzzard, although the Cooth has got their uh, got their Wednesday night open mic going again. You should be keep, keeping your eyes open, because as soon as I start feeling better, there's going to be some there's going to be some interesting uh, interesting action around the Cooth Buzzard. I'm I am uh, I'm hopeful. Oh, speaking of the Cooth Buzzard, and then there's Theo, of course. Theo chimes in, and I realize that I forgot to do this again. I'm supposed to do this every week, Theo. I'm sorry. Maybe what I do every week is forget and then remember when I see that you're here. <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's what I'm doing now. Maybe that's the the new uh, segment of the program is Bill remembering to put on his Cooth Buzzard pin and poking himself in the thumb. Anyway, uh, I'm hopeful that we're going to get something going uh, again. One of those YouTube specials. Yeah. More about that as it uh, as my body starts to recover and I feel like I can take it on because it's going to be a, a technical marvel. Oh yes, it's going to be. <laughs> well, now I've said something I don't know. I may have overcommitted just then. That may have been the overcommitment just then. Oh well, what are you going to do? I guess we'll do the show. Aaron Ochoa, hey man. Connie Seleska, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Connie's here. Oh my goodness. And Theo's here. Oh man. Theo is the proprietor of the Cooth Buzzard, so yeah. He's the uh, the owner, the the uh, owner operator of the Cooth Buzzard bookstore, which is one of my favorite places to play ever. <laughs> I can't wait to get back there. The hand has recently started keeping a notebook. And I'm like, cool. You know, because I, I, you know, my na by nature, I want to take credit for it, right? I want to, you know, it's, it's, it's only because I'm around, you know, with my whole notebook situation. No, it's not. It had nothing to do with me. But still... You know, she lives right, you know, in the same rooms that I do, so I can take credit for all kinds of stuff that I don't really deserve because, you know, the news never really leaves the house and, except through this little portal right here. So, <laughs> though I am not responsible in any way, I like to think that I've had a positive influence. You know, it's nice, it's nice for a guy like me to think that there maybe are one or two things that we've done that may have been good. This being one, and that being the other. And since this and that are the two things, the two primary drivers of anything that resembles the, my life anymore, it's good to give credit where credit is due. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna play Notebook is what I'm saying. This seems like kind of a devotional song to me, and I, you know, I know it doesn't come across that way, but I see it as being chant-like, and it is made up of the kind of disparate and seemingly unrelated things that you write in your notebook when you're not, when you've got no filters, you got no editors, you got nobody telling you what you should write. Your rational mind is not awake yet. You know, you're there, and you pick up the pen and you go, and it could be a grocery list or it could be, you know, something. You know, amazing. You don't know until you're done. You look back and you go, what was, what was I thinking about? And you find out when you read it again, not while you're writing it. It's a trick. It's a trick, and you can learn how to do it. And it takes practice. For the waiting, it's a 
Short candle for the night blind Something there on the other side A blue horse on a banker's bride It takes you when you're looking away Takes the place of a sunny day A winter wind up the leg of your pants A swirl of snow on the curbside dance Language of the bone beneath the skin A way of looking at the day you find you in Question mark at the end of your arm The way we all pretend to do no harm A slice of cheese on the kitchen floor Bad news at the sliding glass door Gravel slipping off a dump truck The bumpy road of your love love A taste of somebody's good night kiss You jerk the wheel and you just miss Language of the bone beneath the skin Way of looking at the day you find you in oh. Tax day at 11 p.m. Realizing it's us, not them Something sinister you ate last week The way you've settled into being a free It takes you when you're looking away it takes the place of a sunny day A winter wind up the leg of your pants A swirl of snow on the curbside dance Language of the bone beneath the skin A way of looking at the day you find you Bone beneath the skin The day you find you Notebook that's called That's on an album called Lifelike Yes indeed a Rooney's Yes, indeed, a Rooney's, folks. You know, I'm realizing something, you know. You know, because, because the treehouse is a casual place, you know. It's kind of a come-as-you-are kind of place. Kind of a whatever, whenever, whoever, why ever, you know, all that. It's that kind of a place, you know. Because it's that, I can, I can tell you. That I think my guitar is tuned like a half step too low. I got this this tuner app over here, and sometimes it leads me astray. And I put on new strings this afternoon, right about four o'clock. I put on new strings, and I was stretching them out, tuning them up, getting them ready, getting them ready, so that the the first time I really lay into them would be here at the show. And I think that tuner over there has led me to everything is a half step down tonight. So this is a special collector's edition of the treehouse because Bill sang everything a half step lower. Isn't that cool? Aren't you glad you were a part of it? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Anyway, that's just another way of saying poetry break! Poetry break! Poetry break! Poetry break! Poetry! 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 Yeah. There's no way to be any fancier than that, folks. It's, it's time for that. Where's my stump? Where is in in stump? Now, people, you gotta understand something. You gotta understand about your uh, your poetry leader here, Billy Bob Bajingo, your poetry conduit, your your poetry fella. I'm uh, I'm just trying to survive, you know, just trying to survive, and part of what what I'm trying to survive with is I want to make another album. I want to make another album. And because of that, I'm going to say I do have a PayPal tip jar, a Venmo tip jar. And I want to say that if you want to give me some money and get something for it, then go to Bandcamp. 
go to my Bandcamp page. If you don't own every album that I've ever made, you can buy one of my albums for like 10 bucks. You give me 10 bucks, I get like $9 of it, and you get an album. I am great with that. So if you don't own the entire uh, catalog, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, don't, th don't throw your money into the tip jar and not get anything for it. Yeah. Okay? All right. I want to show you something. That guy right there. That guy right there. Take a minute. Take a minute and look at that photograph. <sighs> yeah, that's Jim Harrison. Yeah, that's right, friends. Jim Harrison. What can I tell you? One of my all-time heroes. He also looked like that. <laughs> that. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you. Recently, when I look in the mirror, that's what I see. <laughs> that's what I see. Minus the cigarette. Because I gave that up, you know, some time ago. But, uh, yeah. That's what I see when I look in the mirror. It's getting more and more like that. And I'm okay with it. Because, you know what? He's one of my all-time favorite poets. You know. That's exactly right. And his last book was called Dead Man's Float. And it's a great one. It's as good as anything he ever did in his entire life. And this month, actually on the 26th of this month, Copper Canyon Press, right up there in Port Townsend, who publish, also publish uh, 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 Jim Harrison, is coming out with Jim Harrison's Collected Poems. Now, before you jump up and order yourself one, it's going to be like 900 and some pages long. It is going to be what they call in the trades a weighty tome. Now, I've got a few weighty tomes over here, like this one, Collected Poems of Thomas Hardy. That's a weighty poem. That's all poetry. That's a weighty tome. And down here, I got the, uh, the Collected Poems of Denise Lebertov in hardcover. That's uh, that. People, that's a weighty tome, I'll tell you. And I'll tell you, these weighty tomes, they're great. They're great to have on the shelf. But you know, I like something I can throw in my backpack, take with me when I go out into the world. Man. The weighty tomes. So anyway, there's still a lot of Jim Harrison's books that are like manageable size available too. So Dead Man's Float, I would definitely recommend. So I'm going to stop talking and start reading now. Sorry. I tend to talk more when I'm hurting. Um, his last book, he was sick. His wife had already passed. And, uh, yeah. He died when he was 78. He died at his writing desk, looking out the window, writing a poem. Window, writing desk. Yeah. This is called Hospital. It's kind of a prose poem. I was chest high in the wheat field with wind blowing in shimmering circles. A girl on horseback came by on a trail and the horse smelled sweet with the wheat. How blessed horses smell in this bitter world. I could see the hospital in the distance and imagined the surgeons in the basement sharpening their knives. Tomorrow they will cut me from neck bone to tail bone to correct mysterious imperfections that keep me from walking. I want to walk like other kids in the fields with my noble dog. After surgery, I didn't get well, and they sent me to Mayo in Minnesota, an immense pentagon of health machinery. In an ambulance plane, I ate a bad sandwich in keeping with the tradition of bad food that would last until my secretary brought me takeout from a nearby restaurant. Each night I sang along with a bed sore cantata from the endless halls, the thousand electronic gizmos beeping, and also people entering my room for tests. I was endlessly sacrificed in the medical gizmo altar. There was no red wine and no cigarettes, only the sick who tore at the heart. A beautiful girl, Peyton, couldn't walk. I shudder whenever I passed her room. On very long, sleepless nights, I'd gaze at the well-lit statue of St. Francis across the courtyard. I'm not Catholic, 
but he bore me up with birds on his shoulders. One night the planet Venus dropped unwelcome on his neck. Francis with Venus is not right. I don't think he knew a woman. I saw the same thing in Norbonne, France, one night with a million blackbirds flocking above the canal from the trip south across the Mediterranean. Venus was blurred on the peak of the cathedral. My spine aches from top to bottom. Also, my shingles burn a special punishment. Francis heard me crying over Peyton. He doesn't care about her beauty, I suppose. There were no beauty contests among his birds. I heard Mozart's last trio last night, a spine tickler, like the night I heard Thelonious Monk in, in Grand Central. There were so many emotions on earth, especially trapped here where moment by moment I surge with emotions. I'm told this place is admired throughout the world, though my brain waves tell me different. The nurses are kind and friendly, while the doctors tend towards smug and arrogant. Hundreds of doctors looking for something wrong are suspicious. The old bugaboo of depression slid in. I wanted to sleep on the floor, but it was frozen in an electric bed. I began to have delusions, and at one point I was in Paris at my favorite food store buying cheeses with my grandson. Another night I was wailing, and the attendant shook me awake. I'm dying, I said. No, you're not. You're just wailing. I ate an apple and went back to staring at St. Francis with his birds. Without birds, I'm dead. They are my drug that lifts me from up to flight. Thousands of kinds of birds I've studied. Even in the rain, they, have seem, they seem more blessed on the branches. What is, a, what is wailing? A death-drawn crooning. It, turns to, it hurts to hear noises from the pet pediatric ward, the innocent crying out, I am thoroughly guilty in a long life. I wanted to be a cello. I hear cellos when I'm trout fishing. The green banks with wild roses capture the cellos and thousands of birds, many sweet-sounding warblers and colorful western tanagers. Will I fish again with this badly ruptured spine? The scar looks like the bite of an ancient creature. There is a place in us to weep for others. I found it at night with daytime eyes, whirling the memories of fre so fresh you could smell the pain within dark and within it is dark and raw. The great sprawl of sick people craving outside to walk in a forest beside a lake, the air full of birds in the greenery, St. Francis dozing against a tree, a yellow warbler perched on his shoulder. There is no way out of this prison we have built so clumsily, hellish in its ugliness. Most of us want to stay. I can't die when I want to go back to Norbone and my secret room where I write so much. They cut me open in a long strip and luckily sewed me back up. In hospitals, we are mostly artful sewage systems. I need my secret place in the upper peninsula near Lake Superior, my dark thicket covered by winter. It is night in there, but I can watch passing animals, a deer, bear, even possums, which I love for their humility. The thicket is flooded with birds a few inches from my good eye. Francis would love this thicket. Maybe I'll take him there someday. And best of, all, best of all, a stump in a gully that I can crawl into and sit up. My place of grace on earth. My only church. The gods live there. How to get out of this hospital? I planned three departures, but a doctor won't sign my release. I'm, I am desperate for home and my lovely wife. They want to keep me here, though departure is supposedly voluntary. Finally, a friend in California sent a jet and saved me. We loaded up my daughter, my secretary, her daughter, and were soaring back to Montana. A green glade of soft marsh grass near a pool in a creek. There are a dozen white birches, and I curl in the grass. The last day I saw a drop of blood on a tile. Be careful. Our, our blood falls easily. There he is. There he is. Standing in a creek. 
with his dog. Yeah. All right, that's Jim Harrison. This is called Solstice Litany. Solstice Litany. You know, I was thinking of Bill and Debbie on that last poem. They were in the UP recently. I don't know. I like thinking about it. I like putting myself in these places, although I've never been there. And, I, you know, Jim Harrison is one of those writers where, wherein it doesn't matter if you've never been there, you know? But I think of my friend Tim and my friend Steve and the Nebraska connection. Because Jim Harrison wrote the novel Dalva and the novel The Road Home, uh, he is forever connected to my Nebraska experience. Solstice Litany. This is in five parts, and I'm not going to number them. I'm just going to pause between the parts. The Saturday morning meadow lark came in from high up, with her song gliding into tall grass, still singing. How I'd like to glide around singing in the summer, then go south to where I already was, and find fields full of meadow larks in winter. But when walking my dog, I want four legs to keep up with her as she thunders down the hill at top speed, then belly flops into the deep pond. Lark or dog, I crave the impossible. I'm just human, all too human. I was 19 and mentally infirm when I saw the prophet Isaiah. The hem of his robe was as wide as the horizon, and his trunk and face were thousands of feet up in the air. Maybe he appeared because I had read him so much and opened too many ancient doors. I was cooking my life in a cracked clay pot that was leaking. I had found secrets I didn't deserve to know. When the battle for the mind is finally over, it's late June, green and raining. A violent windstorm the night before the solstice, the house creaked and yawned. I thought the morning might bring a bald earth, bald as a man's bald head, but not shiny. But dawn was fine, with a few downed trees, the yellowest, yellow rose bush splendidly intact. The grass was all there, dotted with black Angus cattle. The grass is indestructible, except for fire, but, ha but now it's too green to burn. What did the cattle do in the storm? They stood with their butts toward the wind, erect Buddhists waiting for nothing in particular. I was in bed, cringing it at gusts, imagining the contents of earths all blowing north and piled up where the wind stopped, the, pi the pile sky high. No one can climb it. A gopher comes out of a hole as if nothing happened. The sun should be a couple of million miles closer today. It shouldn't hurt anything, and anything this cold, rainy June is hard on me and the nesting birds. My own nest is stupidly uncomfortable. The chair of many years, the old windows don't keep the weather out, the, wind, the wet wind whipping my hair. A very old robin drops dead on the lawn, a first for me. Millions of birds die, but we never see it. They like privacy in this holy, fatal moment, or so I think. We can't tell each other when we die. Others must carry the message to and fro. He's gone, they'll say, while writing an average poem destined to disappear among the millions of poems written now by mortally average poets. Solstice at the cabin deep in the forest. The full moon shines in the river. There are pale green northern lights. A huge thunderstorm comes, comes slowly from the west. Lightning strikes a nearby tamarack, bursting into flame. I go into the cabin, feeling unworthy. At dawn, the tree is still smoldering. In this place, the gods touched earth. Forgot to turn that alarm off again. Sorry. Oh, hush. Oh, hush. Yeah, let's turn that off, Bill. I can't be having that. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Find it, Bill. Find it. There it is. It's just a reminder to take a pill, and I already took it.
I took it early. Ouch. Maybe I didn't. Might be a different pill. Okay, continuing on with Jim Harrison. I've got a few more of these to read to you. For something, something in me connects to the wild man that Jim Harris... I mean, look at this guy. You know? There aren't very many videos of him on YouTube, but watch any of them. You'll get a sense of how he was, who he was. And uh, the older he got, the more he became that guy. That sounds like a template I can follow. You know? It's a good, it's a good one. Another Country, this is called. I love these raw, moist dawns with a thousand birds you hear but can't quite see in the mist. My old alien body is a foreigner struggling to get into another country. The loon call makes me shiver. Back at the cabin, I see a book, and I'm not quite sure what that is. This one's called Zona. My work piles up. I falter with disease. Time rushes toward me. It has no breaks. Still, the radishes are good this year. Run them through butter. Add a little salt. I think I've read this one before. It's called Seven in the Woods. I think Zona might be short for Arizona. He had a place in uh, Patagonia, Arizona. Yeah. I like everything about Jim Harrison except the Arizona part. I will not be, in fact, moving to Arizona at any point. Unless I have to. Seven in the Woods. Am I as old as I am? Maybe not. Time is a mystery that can tip us upside down. Yesterday I was seven in the woods, a bandage covering my blind eye. In a bedroll, mother made me so I could sleep out in the woods far from people. A garter snake glided by without noticing me. A chickadee landed on my bare toe, so light she wasn't believable. The night had been long and the treetops thick with a trillion stars. Who was I, half blind in the forest floor? Who was I at age seven? Sixty-eight years later, I can still inhabit that boy's body without thinking of the time between. It is the burden of life to be many ages without seeing the end of time. Those last two lines. It is the burden of life to be many ages without seeing the end of time. It is the burden of life to be so to be many ages without seeing the end of time. That's one of the cool things about poetry. You know? It's all about the stresses. Bill Wollum probably knows how to actually read that poem. I like I like reading it four or five different ways and figuring thinking I don't know. Which one works today? The present, this is called. I'm sitting on the lip of this black hole, a well that descends to the center of the earth. With a big telescope aimed straight down, I see a red dot of fire and he the, hear the beast howling. My back is separated with disease. The heart lurches left and right. The brain sings its ditties. Everywhere blank white movies wait to be seen. The skylark flew within inches of the rocks before it stopped and rose again. The cost of flight is landing. I'm going to read that one again. The present. I'm sitting on the lip of this black hole, a well that descends to the center of the earth. With a big telescope aimed straight down, I see a red dot of fire and hear the beast howling. My back is separating with disease. The heart lurches left and right. The brain sings its ditties. 
Everywhere, blank white movies wait to be seen. The skylark flew within inches of the rocks before it stopped and rose again. The cost of flight is landing. The book is Dead Man's Float. The poet is this guy. Yeah, complete with the American spirit. He, he smoked American spirit. I just happened to know that. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. I was going to read a few more, but when I got to that one, I realized, I know, that's, that's a good stopping point. I don't know. Maybe Jim Harrison's an acquired taste, but man, when his poetry hit me, it hit me good. It hit me in the right, in just a very primal place. So maybe that's what it's all about. Alfie. Maybe so. If you want me to try and tune to the right pitch? What happened? What's going on? I would like to be at the right pitch for this song and for all the songs. Come on, Bill. Come on. Aren't you glad you came? I know Tim Schweiger's out there going, oh my god, Bill. Okay, all right. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I'll make it up. I'll make it up to you. I will. Really, I will. Where was I? I really will. I really will. I know that hasn't happened before. Something 
things will just spring right up. Some need to be planted, some roots they go down so deep. We take them for granted. We thought that we knew you well, thought we had you pegged. So imagine our surprise when you started to do see do. Wildlife, that's called. After a long tuning, that's the song I wanted to play after reading Jim Harrison's poem. Because it's kind of a wild song. I, every time I play it, it's like it's, you know, it's, I never quite, it's never, I, it never fully, but that's kind of, it's nature. It's nature is to be one of those songs that's skating along the edge. And not ever quite under control because that's how it's supposed to be. That's how Jim Harrison is. Anyway, finally Woody is in tune uh, at pitch. I'm not used to this new app yet, so it messed with my head. It's what it did. It's what it did. It messed with my head. What are you going to do? I'll tell you what you're going to do. Hey there, kids. Let's all gather around the old ICU2 TV set. We've got some birthdays to talk about. That's right, friends. Some auspicious ones. <laughs> auspicious. Auspicious birthday. That's right, friends. Starting with right here, right now, very much today, happening as we speak, and ongoing. The celebration has been going on all week. Amelia Hanron. Amelia Hanron, my kid! I've known Amelia most of her life, and I do count her as one of my kids. And uh, Amelia's having a big milestone birthday today, and the party never stops. What are you going to do? And she's, uh, Alice considers her her sister. James considers her, her, his sister too. You know, it's like that. It's like that. One big happy. Amelia Hanron, happy birthday, my dear. Yes. Uh, Brandon Paisley, also celebrating a birthday today. Happy birthday to Brandon. Tomorrow. Oh, another auspicious one. Yes, 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 yes. Two, uh, two close relatives of mine. My stepbrother and sister, Kurt and Kelly LaRue. They are twins. They're celebrating their birthday tomorrow. Kurt and Kelly, happy birthday. Kelly LaRue and Kurt Strepp are celebrating their birthday. Not Kurt and Kelly LaRue. Kelly LaRue, Kurt Strepp are celebrating their birthdays tomorrow. Yeah. Also tomorrow, Clay Ashford. Yeah, Sarah just had her birthday like yesterday or the day before. And now Clay's birthday is on Thursday. No, Wednesday. I'm going to get this right. I'm going to get this right. On Thursday, Liz McDonald, another of Alice's old friends. Yes, indeed, from the Met How, celebrating her birthday on Thursday. Friday? Saturday? Two days in a row, I got nothing. Somebody needs to fill in my calendar. Yeah, I got other stuff I'm doing, you know. I just look in the usual places if I don't see birthdays. I move on. I move on to Sunday. Sunday, Deanna Kennison is having her birthday on Sunday. Happy birthday, Deanna. Deanna, a uh, local musician, been playing for years and years and years, and uh, just has a great voice. So, Deanna, happy birthday on Sunday. Also, Steve Johnson from back there at Stadium High School in Tacoma, class of 76. Steve Johnson having his birthday on Sunday. On Monday, Diane Arthur 
celebrating her birthday. Happy birthday, Diane, on next Monday. And John English, another stadiumite, another 76er. I think he, was he? Was John in our class or was he older? Or, yeah, I can't. There were a couple of three Englishes. And so I can't remember what all the brothers were. I think there was a couple of brothers, at least two. Because I remember Tom. It was John and Tom. Back when people had names like John and Tom and Bob, Bill, you know. <laughs> Those kind of boring old names. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Why did I turn that back up? Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, folks. Oh, I know why. Jeez. Because I was going to do a bonus song because of all that tuning. You guys don't mind hanging out a little bit. You guys don't mind hanging out a couple extra minutes, do you? Milt Foreman's in the house. He's from the old neighborhood. Yes, sir. Tim Vernon. Tim Vernon's writing in. Kathy Brewer's writing in. Holly Tuttle's writing in. Okay. This describes me pretty well. What's this? <laughs> Diane, what's the next line? Oh, got it. Thank you. Oh, I'm on my lips, but I still got my dignity. I'm on my lips. My mommy is calling me. I'm on my lips. Let's speak in broader terms. I'm on my lips. Roll over this bed of worms. Cause I've been no guy. Oh my god. I'm lost. I'm lost. Okay, all right. All right, now Diane's like, you know, 20 seconds behind me, so I'm gonna try that one more time. I'm on my lips, but I still got my dignity. I'm on my lips. My mommy is calling me. I'm on my lips. Let's speak in broader terms. I'm on my lips. Roll over the bed of worms. You see, I'm gonna write a book about it, read the ledger's red. Retired of Micronesia, put a bullet in my head. I'm on my lips. I'm on my lips. My eyes don't focus right. I'm on my lips. Guess I'm afraid they might. I'm on my lips. Just look at these toasted clothes. I'm on my lips. Not to mention the bloody nose Cause I've been beaten up and brutalized By things that I have said And now I'm doing my level best To place my face beneath the tread I'm on my lips I'm on my lips been my checkered past I'm on my lips maybe the body cast I got rope and dope and glassy caps to see me to the end but if I'm gonna find a match I might be forced to make a friend I'm on my lips uh, I'm on my lips right now you're
say goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Well, you know, <clears throat> took a few pulls to get it started. Yeah. I didn't use the choke enough. I just took a few pulls. Yeah. But eventually, revved up okay. Well, got a little extra. Got a little extra in the tank tonight. song I wrote uh, partly in the passenger seat of Jim Page's van on our way down down uh, I think we were going from Corvallis to Ashland Oregon I could have been from Eugene to Corvallis it could have been something simpler shorter trip I don't know but I was sitting in the passenger seat I had my notebook on my lap and wrote the, the first verse to this song at least I think I wrote the first two because I was anticipating no see we were on our way to Deadwood or maybe no we had played in Deadwood I think we'd played at the Deadwood Fire Hall the night before, and we're on our way south. Jim might remember better than I do, but I doubt it. Um, anyway, I finished the song at my sister's dining room table in Puyallup uh, before I went back to the Mehau uh, at the end of that trip. That's where my dad visited. It was a, it was a visitation at my sister's dining room table. That's why he's in verse number three. It's called Safe in the Sound, and I leave you with this one tonight. Safe in the sound, I'm writing this down while Jim takes a turn at the wheel. Scanning the trees that fly by me for whatever they choose to reveal. And I have no explanation as the car wheels into the town. It's a newfound field of sensation to arrive here safe in the sound. Safe in the sound, I look to the crown at the top of a stairway of hills. Under those stars, I'll tune my guitars as the voices inside grow still. And soon I'll be sharing my moments as friends rise out of the ground. Passing out mirrors and tokens in this place where I'm safe in the sound. Safe in the sound, I feel you smile down from your house out in back of the blue. And maybe I'm through now crying for you as if only your body were true. Tears still rise to the surface when your voice echoes back around. But it comes with a tune and a purpose. Safe in the sound Safe in the sound I'm writing this down Like a page from a mystery play Scanning the trees That fly by me As the sun closes down On the day And I have no Explanation As the car wheels Back into town it's a newfound field of sensation to come home safe and sound.
There you go, folks. Number 62 in the books. Yeah. Thanks, you guys, for coming. Thanks for holding me up. You know you do. You know. You know you do. It's great to see you all. I mean it. I mean it. Thanks for sitting through the Jim Harrison. I know he would appreciate it. <sighs> okay, so we're going to take care of each other. I should let you know right now that on the 26th of October, there will be no treehouse because the hand and I are going to be uh, elsewhere on that night. So that's the next one we're taking off. But the next one is the 12th. Yes, Tuesday the 12th, 7 p.m. Same bad time, same bad channel. I will be here. I hope you can be here too. If you can't make it, no worries, no worries. But you know, you know where we are, okay? Thanks, you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you.